Hi, this is Ms. Wright, and I'm going to go over Act 2, Scene 6, the passage that relates to these violent delights. We are um, looking at the text that comes just before the marriage of Romeo and Juliet. So in Scene 6, Friar Lawrence's cell, meaning Friar Lawrence's chamber, uh, he says, so smiles the heavens upon this holy act, and hour and after hours with sorrow chide us not. So I found an example of metonymy, which refers right here to heavens. Uh, he means the gods or God. Um, he would believe in one God, obviously. And when you use a word associated like instead of saying the president you say white house but you mean the president and his authority it is called metonymy and i defined metonymy for you down here or rather dictionary.com did and when he talks about that after hours with sorrow chide us not he's hoping that this marriage he's about to perform will turn out for the best and that they won't regret and feel punished later on for what they are doing. So it's there's also some foreshadowing here. So let me put that in. Okay, so he is talking about he does not want them to be punished for what they're about to do. And we know that definitely there are going to be negative consequences for his actions. So uh, in a sense, you may feel that, oh no, Romeo and Juliet do get punished for what they are about to do. Okay. Then the next passage says, or Romeo responds by saying, Amen, amen, but come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. And I talked about this in a, a different video, but I will repeat it here. Um, that Romeo feels that he's willing to pay the price for a moment of joy with Juliet. And he brings up death. He even says, let love devouring death, and that death can consume love. And he refers to it as he, which is why I um, put personification. Death becomes another character in this play, and you will actually see that, especially in Act 5, where death almost takes on a, a full embodiment in the final uh, scenes of the play, as though he is truly addressing dress death and fighting death for Juliet. Um, think of Cyrano, when Cyrano is making his final speech, um, speech in that play and he in addresses death who has come for him death becomes like another character it is enough that I may call her mine so he's defying death he's challenging death and he says he doesn't care as long as he can say that Juliet is his but what he hasn't thought of here is what will happen to Juliet when death comes is, Jul is death only going to take him or will it also affect Juliet? So I have um, Romeo defies death to take away his joy and it's dramatic irony as so much of the play is because we know that his words will become fulfilled by the end. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die 
like fire and powder, which as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in its own deliciousness and in the taste confounds the appetite. So you have foreshadowing here when it says these violent delights have violent ends. You have foreshadowing. I also noticed that you also have E and a lip S I S. You have E panalipsis. So you have foreshadowing and you have E panalipsis with violent and violent repetition after intervening words. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die like fire and powder. I put here simile because he's comparing the situation to an explosion. What happens when you put fire with gunpowder? You get a huge explosion, which he calls a kiss that consumes what he, that's a metaphor for giant explosion. He says the sweetest honey in its loads is loathsome in its own deliciousness. So honey, a little bit of honey is very enjoyable. You eat the whole jar of honey, you're going to be sick and you're going to detest the taste of honey. And that is what he's trying to say. A little bit of joy, a little bit. Romeo wants to have everything all at once. And he's trying to tell him to be moderate and to eventually he'll tell him to slow down, go slower. Okay, so this is a metaphor, the whole bit about the honey. And it is possible to have too much of a good thing so that you make yourself ill. Therefore, he says, love moderately. Lo long love doth so. So if you stretch it out, it will last. Slow down. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. So love that comes quickly is as bad as love that takes forever. Um, and here I saw alliteration with the repeated T sounds. I saw epanalipsis um, with the two and the two. And I saw antithesis with the swift and the slow. So um, if you remember what I said in class, that one line of Shakespeare can yield many literary terms and syntactical devices. And you can write a lot about just one or two lines and then expand those lines to really begin to encompass the whole play, which is something that we want to do before we end this, um, end this play. Okay. The friar gives uh, warnings to Romeo and Juliet several times throughout the play. Look for them as we continue to read. And the main idea here was that these violent delights, these extreme passions, extreme passions that you experience can also have extreme consequences and you need to slow down. Okay, lovely couple. And we feel for them. As an audience, we should be feeling maybe some pathos because we know what they're um, going towards and such a lovely young couple. All right, I tried to keep this under 10 minutes and guess what, I did. I will see you back in class. Um, shout out to all my fabulous students. Please keep watching the videos. If you use these videos, go through them one by one and use them to annotate your packet. Guess what? You will have all the annotations that you need to get full credit for that packet, okay? Have a great day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.